Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Amit Nath. I run Trend Micro for the country. Um, if you know Trend Micro, we are one of the leading security providers. But I'm here today to talk about what exactly is happening in the security industry today. Uh, so thank you, thank you, Professor and, and Arvind, for, for giving me a platform to probably take forward some of the thought process that they've shared with you and what we believe and what we see uh, is happening out there. So hopefully over the next seven to nine minutes, I'll take you through what is happening in, uh, in, in across government verticals across different countries. How can you make sure that your risk assessment models are followed in, in India at, at, a, at a government perspective? Uh, I will also probably take that discussion that Arvind raised a little bit forward about how we can make India better to make sure that we are safe. So if, if, if all of you, you track what's happening in the security industry, and of course we do, we have 1,000 people who work 24 by 7 uh, and track every single security incident that happens not only in India, but across the globe. Last seven days, ladies and gentlemen, there's a very high profile name by the name of Randy Vickers. Can someone in the audience tell me who is Randy Vickers? If you guys have read the newspapers. Randy Vickers, gentlemen and ladies, was the head for US certain. The, the agency that monitors your cyber crimes. He just resigned last seven days, if you have read the newspapers. We have uh, our respected Dr. Gulshan Rai in India, who heads, who heads India certain. So he's probably Dr. Gulshan Rai's counterpart in the US. His name is Randy Vickers. He had to resign. And he's now replaced by another gentleman called Lee Rock, who is now the new cybersecurity head in the US. You know why he resigned? Because the number of attacks against the US government have reached an all-time high. He had to take moral responsibility. Now, I'm not going to attribute any political motive here or something. Uh, it's not my job. But this tells you the significant impact a cybersecurity threat can do. Right? Look, at, look at some of the other incidents that happen. As Trend Micro, as one of the leading security companies today in India, or in Asia Pacific, or in Japan, we see immense amount of hacking incidents happen. I wake up on a Monday morning and I see NSG website hacked. I wake up on a Wednesday morning, I see some, something else happening, right? As an Indian, it, it doesn't make me feel very good. It doesn't, as Arvind said, it really doesn't matter where the hacker is. The point to be made is something is happening in India, right? So as a security company, we definitely see India as a very prominent country, right? Uh, a lot of you would realize now, compared to 15 years ago when we were kids in school, we used to always have these global outbreaks. You know, we used to talk about Melissa viruses and I love you viruses and all of that. But do you realize today, in the last couple of years, we have never had a global outbreak? These days, the attacks are completely different. You would not even know that you are under attack. You go back home, you would not even know that your computer that my son or your daughter uses could be transmitting data to somewhere else, to some command and control center. You wouldn't even know. So India as a country today features in the top three countries that are heavily on everyone's radar. Cyber crime is a huge industry. And India, for whatever reasons, we are what, 75 million internet users in the country today? If we go to 350 million internet users by 2014, just imagine what's going to happen in our society. So India does figure very, very well in terms of hackers trying to attack India. So, so we see that phenomena very, very well. The funny part is, right, if, if, I, if I track last five months, right, I will start naming you multiple defense institutions in Asia Pacific and in the country, right, right from Intel to Lockheed Martin to everything. Everything is getting attacked, left, right, and center. We recently heard of a big attack in, in Japan, and we are a Japanese-based <coughs> company, uh, Sony. We all know, right, my son uses a PlayStation. The PlayStation entire network got hacked uh, in, in Japan. So these attacks are happening increasingly because our lives today completely are getting driven by what we do on the internet. So whether whatever you're doing today, right, you're doing it over the internet. So a lot of these applications, these web applications, are getting attacked by hackers left, right, and center, day in and day out. Here is some interesting data for you. Every 1.5 seconds, there is a new malware that gets released. 
You go to a website, you wouldn't know whether the website has malware inside that website. Every second, there is a one point, every 1.5 second, there's a new malware. We have 1,000 people across the globe who just track how, how much malware is coming out. If you look at some of the predictions over the next three years, the amount of threats we all as people will receive if you don't have, as Professor correctly pointed out, if you don't have the right models, as Arvind correctly pointed out, if you don't have the right platforms, if you don't have the right security incident tools, right, you will, you will, you will have to remain protected all the time because the number of threats that are coming out is incredible. And therefore, as a security company who understands security, I can assure you there is no security company in the world who will guarantee you 100% foolproof protection. You can pick up any company in the world. If you choose the right framework, as uh, Dr. Sir correctly pointed out, if you do the right incident uh, management approach, and Arvind spoke about that, there has to be a security incident manager who can actually analyze all those security incidents for you. Right? It has to be done in a very systematic way. Is, are our governments ready today to do that? There is a significant amount of change that we see in the, in the Indian government today. Right? I'm aware that maybe in about a couple of months from now, Professor, we'll come out with e-security guidelines for, 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 for Indians. Right? There's a lot of work happening. But I think it's very important for India to realize that the, that the government sector needs to do completely things differently if we have to stay protected. You look at two of the highest uh, governed sectors in India today, and, and Professor made a mention of that. One of them is BFSI. It's the most tightly regulated sector in India. Every single norm that you can think of, it's there. So those banks are always protected in India. They're one of the most best banks from that perspective. You look at the telecom vertical regulated by TRI. It's one of the most heavily regulated sectors. What about government? So over the next five minutes, I'll quickly share with you what governments are doing, uh, I mean, beyond India, what are the other governments doing, which we can all learn from. And I will try and integrate that to some of the messages that uh, Professor gave and, and Arvind gave. So what's happening in the cyber industry? Every day, as you sleep, as you wake up, there are hackers out there, and they could be anywhere, from Russia to Ukraine to US to even India. You know, Every day, these hackers are sniffing all the time. They're sniffing at our servers, so servers are places where you, where you have your applications running. They're sniffing at our servers. They're sniffing at your applications all, all the time. There is a new term in this security industry today, which is called as advanced persistent threat. You know what's so funny about this threat is? It never gives up. You will not know that a hacker, after sniffing that there is a gap in your security, they will place, if I were to use a, a Hindi terminology for malware, they will place what should I say, Akira, they will place that malware inside, inside your system, you wouldn't even realize that something is happening. You wouldn't even realize that your data is getting stolen. So that sniffing activity is happening literally on our daily, on our hourly basis, every day of our lives. So just imagine, if I am the government of India, right, and I'm not protected, and I have a thana in, in Orissa in a small town, right, and there is a malware which is residing in a small thana in the backward area of Orissa, how do you think you're going to get protected? How will the government, how will an IS officer sitting here in Delhi know that there's something happening in a remote village in Orissa, or for that matter, my own hometown, Lucknow? If something is happening in, in an isolated gaon in Lucknow, how will people sitting in Delhi know that there's a suspicious activity going down? This is what is really, really happening. You will not even realize that the threat is existing. So that's the first part of my conversation, right? So the hackers will constantly look for vulnerabilities. In the security industry, we call them vulnerability. If there is a vulnerability in your operating system, right? It could be any, any platform. If there is any vulnerability on your applications, old applications, new applications, whatever it is, I think you are in deep, deep trouble. So that's the first part of it. Sure. So, so the, the funny thing is, we all have to understand that if uh, we are dealing about security, then whether, it, whether, our, whether it's our applications or whether it is our operating systems, we have to make sure that we are completely patched. We have to find solutions uh, within, within our industry to make sure that all the traditional way of securing applications and operating systems are slowly going away. 
So since I don't have much time, let me quickly take you through to what's happening in Korea. Korea was getting civilly attacked by China, right? There were a lot of Chinese hackers who were attacking the South Korean government. South Korean government came up with an anti-botnet legislation. So an anti-botnet is like a malware. They came up with an anti-botnet legislation and they said, if anything moves in Korea, in any town, in any police station, in any municipal corporation, in any government department, I want to know. So we said, okay, if you want to know, then Trend Micro can help you with that technology. We actually created a central command and control center for the South Korean government. Something that will, so, the, so for example, a Korean official walks into his office, right, he opens up his dashboard and he says, okay, let me just show you a typical example of what a Korean IS officer sees. He walks into his office, this is his entire country, he's got a dashboard, a command and control center, he can actually watch every single activity that is happening in every computer in any locality in Korea. So any, any hacker who has placed any malware in any computer in the South Korean government department, for example in India it's NIC, right, the South Korean government can detect it, can sniff it out, and it can remediate. We call it, as Arvind pointed out, we, we call it threat discovery. So just imagine in India, and this is, we constantly work with the government to, to get this thing going, if, if all our officers in the government today can walk into Electronics Bhavan on Lodi Road or wherever it is, open their dashboards and say, I know what's happening in Khandwa, I know what's happening in Madurai, I know what's happening in Coimbatore. It means you gotta deploy technologies that can sniff out whatever is happening. And there are technologies that are available. So this is something that's happening in their countries. For example, China. China, there's a legislation as well which controls botnet. So very quickly, so, so this is all sample of reports. And, and this is what we lack in India. We lack central command and control centers who will do security incident analysis for us, okay? So I'm not gonna get into what you can do, but ju just to summarize, there are advanced technologies available to protect your operating systems. There are advanced technologies available to protect your application security. There are advanced technologies to give you that alert. If you, if you don't have an alert, how will you mitigate that risk? You must have an, you must have an alert. So ideally, forget about server security and what is ideal server security. There are just four things as my final slide, which I would like to probably talk about in this forum. If I'm the government of India, I like to develop a central command and control center. I must have the power to not only figure out what to do before an event happens. An Indian should not wake up and find out something has happened. I should be able to prevent that incident much before it happens. So I must have early warning and mitigation systems. Second thing is, industry must be a very active participant uh, in terms of how the government frames its security policies. We are the security experts. We could open up our labs. We could do certification and training for government officers, but it's very important. If, if, a, if, if a guy who's in government, he doesn't understand security, how will he protect you? So what are we doing in order to scale up our, our competency levels for government, government infrastructure? So that is something that's food for consideration. The third one is the legal and regulatory. I think I saw Pavan Dugul outside, and he'll tell you, but how many convictions do we have in India after all the acts that have been done for cyber, for cyber crimes? I've never heard of any major convictions. So what's happening to the legal and regulatory? I'm sure there are smarter people than me who can talk about that. And the last one, I look at my son today, right, as, and this is my closing statement, right? Um, I've been working in Trend for the last five years. So he's now 10, he was six years, uh, you know, when he first picked up his laptop or his smartphone. And, and maybe because his, his father works for Trend Micro, his first question to me was, hey dad, I use an iPad and I use a smartphone, can you get me an antivirus for my iPad? Or can you get me an antivirus for my, for my iPhone? And I'm thinking, well, this is my six year, seven year old son. He's 10 now, he's been using an antivirus. If we don't start to do this for our young kids uh, as they grow up, then 10 years down the line, we will not have so security as a doctrine in Indian society. It has to be a part of our educational system. So this is food for thought for the Indian government. But my biggest recommendation is application security, server security, and of course, uh, as Arvind correctly pointed out, a security incident and mitigation plan. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.